Superhero movies have quickly become one of the most popular and best storytelling genres of the big screen. With superhero movies breaking records left and right, it's easy to forget that not that long ago, these same type of movies were the laughing stock of cinema. Tonight's forecast, a freeze is coming. Allow me to break the ice. So what's changed? Why have superheroes become the kings of the silver screen? Well, to figure that out, we have to take a look back. I'm your host, as always, KMAC Time, and welcome to the very first episode of a brand new series I'm calling Then vs. Now. Anyway, let's take a look back and see just how we went from Batman and Robin to The Dark Knight. Well, first things first, companies like Marvel and DC started taking better care of their characters and gave them some continuity. Not just jumping around from actor to actor to play the lead in every movie, and no more sequels that had different directors and didn't have any continuity to the previous movies. Let's examine the Batman movies of the mid-90s. Batman Returns, Batman Forever, and Batman and Robin. God, Batman and Robin is just so awful. Let's take some ice. Anyway, three movies in five years, and we got three different Batmans. We got Michael Keaton, Val Kilmer, and George Clooney. All incredibly different from each other. It made it hard for the audience to connect with the character and turned audiences off. If you look at the state of suspense in those movies, there's none. It's supposed to put you in these state of suspense where you can kind of just go into these worlds and be taken away and lose yourself in them and really become a part of them. And that didn't happen in those movies. But jump forward to 2005 and the Christian Bale Batman trilogy and all these problems were addressed. We got one Batman with a new darker side and a Gotham that was something an audience could connect with. It was something real. You could feel it. And we got the same characters and we got to see them develop over three movies. It gave us that sense of suspended reality that was desperately needed in the previous Batman movies. And going along with continuity is the way that modern films have committed to long form storytelling and developing a character arc over several movies. Not to mention that the genius that went into developing these multi-year plans. Let's take a look at Iron Man. I can remember when the first Robert Downey Jr. film was released. Up until that point in my life, I had never heard of the character. But in that movie, they solidified him as a top-tier character. And by doing so, they could build him up over the next three movies until it was time to bring him together with other characters like Captain America, Hulk, and many others who had they also been building up slowly in their own standalone films in the Avengers. And the Avengers changed the landscape of superhero movies forever, giving the perfect formula for success. Build fan support for characters with a few standalone movies, then bring these characters together in an ensemble movie, then more standalone movies between the next ensemble movie, and it's all tied together with one flowing story arc. That's the key. Get people so immersed in a universe that they fall in love and have to see how each and every movie in order to piece together the overarching plot. These movies are like potato chips. You can't watch just one. You have to see what happens next. And because of this, the box office records are being smashed every year by what seems to be more and more superhero movies. Now let's take a look at another major key to modern day success in superhero movies. Respecting the source material. Let's take a look at this year's biggest box office hit, Deadpool. They took a risk by making it an R-rated film, but by not making Deadpool a PG-13 type character, they were able to keep its style exactly how it is in the comic books and other source material. If they would have taken away the F word, or the extreme violence, or any of the sexual puns, then it would have turned out that fans who were fans of the comic book series would have been turned off almost instantly. Keeping the source material as a character bible is an absolute must in today's movies. There hasn't, this always hasn't been the case, and that's a major part of why many superhero films of the past flopped in the box office. And finally, the most obvious reason that today's superhero movies are so good is because of today's modern technology and CGI film production. Just think if they had tried to make Ant-Man in the late 1980s. How cringeworthy would that movie have been? With today's CGI and film equipment, literally nothing is impossible on the big screen. The days of cheesy superhero costumes and awful choreographed fight scenes are long gone, being replaced by incredible looking CGI battles that are mind-blowingly awesome. And because of these technological advances, superhero movies have blossomed into some of the best films ever to grace the silver screen. And with loads of them coming out every year, 
superhero movies look like they are here to stay for quite a while. So I hope you guys enjoyed this new series. Let me know what you guys think about it. Also, let me know what should be next in the then versus now. Video games, cartoons, comic books, you let me know what you guys want to see and I will get it done for you guys. So make sure you guys leave a comment. Also, make sure you guys hit that like button and share this video. It helps on my channel immensely. Also, subscribe if you guys are new around here for more videos like this daily. But until next time, guys, remember that it's always K-Mac time somewhere. Take it easy and peace out.